morning, good morning. Happy Saturday in the month of April in the year of our Lord, 2023. How is everybody doing today? I hope you slept well. I tend to always ask that question whenever I go live, like in the mornings. <laughs> um, I do. I do. I hope you slept well and that things are going well for you. Good morning. Good morning to Dawn and Val B. Good morning. Hello. I've got a wonderful show in store for today. As you can see down here, check out my guest social links down below. All the information is down there because I'm going to be having the capable gentleman. I mean, it's no spoiler. You've already seen. I'm going to be having the capable gentleman on the channel today and we're going to paint well. You'll just have to wait and see in just a second. I mean, you may have figured it out by the thumbnail, but it's all good. I am Dreaming Tabitha. I'm an artist here on YouTube if you're new around here. And I hope to entertain you and enlighten you on maybe your artistic journey that you have. Um, dance dances. <laughs> Dawn, that's excellent. And as people keep rolling in, um, I just want to encourage you to hit that like button. When you get to a point where you're like, I really enjoy what's going on over here. And say so just hit that little like button. But uh, yeah, looking forward to today's episode. Of course, if you have been around here long enough, you know that I do all kinds of artwork, and you can check out a lot of my different artwork through the you know through the channel and also on my Etsy shop. Again, all links are down below, and you can just see I'm really into chibis. But also live on Thursday nights around 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have been creating a fantasy world together through this art book that one of my subscribers sent to me. And it has been so fun. We created probably one of the strangest, most adorable creatures I think I've ever seen in my life on Thursday. His name was Kevin with a PH, Kevin. And uh, if you don't know what a koala weird toad looks like, then you should definitely check out that stream. Okay, let me tuck this back here. Um, anyway, oh, let me get down here. But anyway, it's time to bring out the man of honor today. And that would be the capable gentleman who is muted at the moment, in case you didn't know. Uh, sorry, I, I was really? coughing out. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to let you know, I'd hate for you. I've done that before. You get started and you're like all excited. I'd be, I'm so glad to be here. Yeah. And and then you're like, what did you say? <laughs> <laughs> um, start all over again. But yeah, this is Lee, the capable good morning. gentleman. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, you s expressed a little while ago that you're a little bit nervous. Why? Why are you nervous? Uh, this, uh, this is new territory for me. I've never done anything like this before. And I'm very, uh, uh, very technical. So art is something that's so expressive and just so natural for so many people. And for me, I'm like a perfectionist. Uh, <laughs> I want everything to be like flawless. Uh, I have a very uh, linear mindset. It's either on, it's either off. Um, and that actually comes out in a lot of my expressions at times. And uh, I'm trying to break out of that and just kind of let things flow and wow. express themselves you know what i mean like yeah perfectionism is like man that's like a curse that's the worst <laughs> isn't it <laughs> your mind's if you know one little thing and you're just like it, it's all ruined it's it's gone forget it it's terrible just start over throw it away you know but then you honestly else looks sound like a it. natural artist with that mentality <laughs> It's well, we'll all see. wrong. The whiskers we'll on the cats are not the right direction. Start over. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just throw it in the fire. But um, yeah, it, it's it's tough. I'm trying really hard to break out of that because somebody else can um, look at it and really appreciate it. And they're just like, this is amazing. You know, I'm going, no, it's not. It's terrible. Look at that. That one one part is off. It ruins the whole thing. <laughs> Yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. Like it you have it sounds like you have the makings for being an artist because many of us are in fact all of us are pretty much like that. You know, sometimes we talked about that, you know, artists that can be chill, it's therapeutic, but it's actually a lot of stress. Like somehow it's some 
<laughs> somehow it's stress relieving and stress causing all at the same time. We can't help ourselves because we have to make artwork, but we kind of hate that we make it just because it needs to be perfect. So sounds like you're in the right group of people today. <laughs> so, um, and then just quickly before we get started, I would love for you, since you're, you're the capable gentleman, you have a YouTube channel. What is that all about? My, my YouTube channel? Well, gosh, the idea started, um, I mean, everybody knows I'm Jay's brother. and uh, Not everybody. Not everybody. Not everybody. Well, if you didn't know, <laughs> the infamous well, drunk 3PO. Right now, so we're not talking about him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he uh, actually got me into the, the YouTube thing. I give him uh, the credit for like pushing me in that direction because... Um, I'm always doing something. I'm either fixing something, creating something, making something, building something, um, stuff around the house, uh, you know, and it's just kind of like a, a, a jack of all trades type thing. I always say like, I'm not great at any one thing, but maybe I'm pretty good at a lot of things. And, um, so many times, uh, friends and even family, they're just like, Hey, can you help me with this? I don't know how to do this. And, um jay was always like the stuff you do just make a video and throw it on youtube you never know what's gonna happen <laughs> just just throw it on YouTube. <laughs> just do it you, you help so many people just help them out with a youtube video and um and i felt led to do that because i i do um encounter a lot of uh young men especially um mm -hmm. who seems like nowadays they they don't know their way they don't know how to take care of themselves and society is rough on them in, yeah. uh, in this day and age so I'm hoping to try to make a change and just kind of be that mentor, maybe that big brother or even, you know, dare I say, like father like figure that maybe they don't have in their lives that I could just show them how to yeah. become a gentleman. We're missing that in, in the world today. I, I would say so. Um, and it's interesting. You you know, I've looked on your channel. I've followed you on Instagram and all these kinds of things. And, you know, when, when typically, I'm going to ask the chat, when you guys think of a gentleman, what exactly do, comes to mind? Just curious for everybody's opinions out there. Typically, though, when you say gentleman, you're kind of thinking of, you know, a well-dressed, courteous person. But on your channel, like it's more than just that. It's more you like you you've you, you've even had a video on uh, types of cologne. Like I love your video and like how your Instagram reel of how to wear cologne. That was hilarious, by the <laughs> way. I thought it was so funny, especially that last bit. But then, um, you know, how to hang stuff on the wall appropriately, how to fix this. And I think it's it's nice that it's like gentlemen expanded, if you will. Like yeah. it's, it's more than just you know, a suit or something like that. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, that's the capable part. And, and, you know, the idea of being capable is just being able to take care of yourself and maybe helping someone else along the way. The gentleman is the kindness effort, the, the appearance effort, the, uh, exactly the, the, the manners, um, you know, just to be, um, kind. I mean, that's actually like end of every, every video I have, I always say, just be kind to everyone. I mean, just that's mm -hmm. that's the whole the whole point of everything, just to be kind to each other. Well, it's it's funny then that we are going to go and head and get started with uh, this painting today. We are doing James Bond, and yes. uh, I'll be honest with you, like he's not. I uh, we we actually. So if you guys follow me on Inside the Booth, we had. We had Lee on the channel with a bunch of other awesome people. And uh, hey, R2, good morning. And um, we got into a discussion about James Bond. Now, I will be honest with you. This is not my idea of a gentleman. <laughs> I know he has he has manners. Yeah. I know. We're, we might get into a heated discussion here. Oh, we um, might. <laughs> we might. Oh, we might. Because it's like, as you get older, you kind of, especially, I think, maybe as a female, you look at me like, he's a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, that's that's rough, man. Uh, <laughs> but the, the thing is, he's flawed. And he's flawed like each and every one of us. Right? Yeah. But he's got some... Uh, he's, he's got something about him where he can handle himself. He's also very charming. 
He's clearly well dressed for the most part. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, you know, we're going back to like the '60s, where some of the things that you know he was wearing in some of the movies, I'm like, oh gosh, please don't ever, <laughs> don't wow, ever 70s. wear that. Again. <laughs> I think, I think uh, Connery was wearing a, a onesie at one point or something. <laughs> like, uh, p- please but put still that still manly in. somehow. Yeah. <laughs> But that could be um, your next video. How to be manly and wear one scene. In, in a onesie. <laughs> <laughs> You're never gonna catch me in a onesie. Sorry. I, that might be that might be the video that just shoots you yep. into the stars, man. My stuff count would just probably go bonkers, but no, I don't think that's gonna happen. But <laughs> never say never. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, that he's kind of like he he was an inspiration to the the channel name um you know just because of how he can handle himself uh he's definitely into the you know the the luxury the finer things uh, in life which is something that so many people want um but yet you know they have the ability to get there and it doesn't necessarily have to be your entire lifestyle needs to be all you know, glitz and glam, and I want the most expensive thing. We can't all it. vacation in Monte Carlo. Exactly. No, 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 no. <laughs> that's not. That's not the point of it. But it's finding your joy uh, with what you do have and and what you can have. You know, in in your own world. And um, no, he's not. He's not the most gentlemanly guy. Uh, he's a he's a womanizer, yeah. and <laughs> that's not what I'm trying to. No, uh, and I get that. And it's one of those things where I try to tell people, it's like, look, from a movie standpoint, movies are fun. They're great. Yeah. Yeah. When you think about it as from like a human to human emulation, <laughs> he's essentially the lady at red at cocktail parties that tries <laughs> to lure dudes to their demise. <laughs> If you think about it. <laughs> for his majesty's service, of course. Yes, yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> for but, for uh, king and country. For yeah, yeah. Now it's for king and country. Um, R2 says be sure to paint the proper rifling twist rate of a what 10? How do you say that? 10 1, 10 to 1 for James Bond's Walter PB Cayley. <laughs> yeah, it's a 10 to 1 um, uh twist ratio. I tell rifle. you what, I will get to some of these other comments in just a second, but let's go ahead and start painting. Let me shift my microphone picking on bond poor guy he's up he's flawed enough and yeah. you just kick him while he's he down. just chooses to stay flawed is the problem <laughs> uh but not anymore he is no longer with us so um nope. <laughs> apparently. okay so this is what we're going to be painting today and uh, like i said i'll get to some of your comments in just a second but i figured we could go ahead and get started and then we'll talk obviously bond is somebody that uh, a lot of people much like star wars can cause quite the controversy especially among the men folk so uh, <laughs> but here we go we can see we've got the nice twist and everything it's going to be super great okay so here we go and we'll move it downwards. Ah, oh, as Just always. Just so everybody knows, I've got a blank canvas here. This is what I'm going to be working on. I'm not, yeah. no tricks here. This is. Show us the facts. That's right. No parlor tricks today. This is as real as it gets right here. <laughs> see how capable I am with painting. Let's, let's, I am so excited to see. So we've got ourselves our little bond man, which we're going to save for later. He's going to kind of help pull everything together. Dun, 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 dun. Yes. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm an animation artist. Did you not know? So what we're going to be doing is creating that swirl pattern. Okay. Now the great thing is the paint been shaken and stirred and shaken, not stirred before you begun. <laughs> Wait, was I supposed to do that? Um, sometimes you can. Yeah. I don't always. <laughs> I've already messed up. See? It's, yeah. Well, I, I, apparently I set you up for disaster and failure just so I could belittle you. You know, that's what i do around here with my guests no <laughs> it's gonna be great what you can do if you haven't mixed and stirred everything up yeah. is that when we go to dip into our paint just kind of rub you know go in okay go and start a little bit but so what we're going to start off with to make it a little easy for you just kind of test the waters right so let me bring this back again you can see oh sorry about that we're going in this you know circular pattern here i i realize that i am left-handed I mean, I knew that, but what I mean is <laughs> sometimes I forget. You but, just found out. Um, 
this may be, and you're going to be welcome to my world. This may be a little difficult to try to reverse for you. The pattern is going in this direction according to the movie. So it's up to you if you want to reverse it. But it won't be quite as nice as swirl because it's like an ocean wave. It curls and comes down this way. So I I could try to do this right-handed. It would still work. So when you do this, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to bring it around and come out, right? You know that, what's it called? Fibonacci, Da Vinci Code, seashell, swirl? Probably not. No. Okay, forget that. Um, <laughs> so, all right. Simple as it is, we're going to be painting. Imagine if you you had a coil of wire, right? Yeah. And you're going to just keep one end in that perfect circular motion and kind of extend the other. That make, maybe makes sense. Okay. You can see it. Like I was holding here. It used to be a perfect circle and I just extended outward. Yeah. So it goes like this. So just kind of go with a swirl pattern. I'll go first. We're going to put, use just a lot of white and a tiny smidge of black. So that way it doesn't look too bad, right? When we first okay. go, because it's trial and error. And you can always clean it up because it's acrylic paint. So you can always cover it up, right? Okay. Here we go. This is where the fun starts. So go ahead and go ahead and dip your brush carefully here into the white paint. Get a generous amount on both sides. Thank you, everybody, for being with us this morning. Please be sure to hit the like button. And the subscribe to Capable Gentleman. But here we go. I'm going to get just the tiniest bit, if it'll stick, there we go, of black on here. You see, it's not a lot, just a wee bit. And what I'm going to do is rotate my paintbrush so that the white is touching the lines. We talked about how the lines are going to be our guidance, right? Yeah. And so mine mine might not be perfect this first time around. That's okay. We've got to figure out the motion. I'm just going to start over at the side just to see how this goes. Like that. Nothing too difficult. Nothing fancy. Okay. So there's a little twist action there too with the brush. Yes. yes. Uh, sometimes things happen um, just like intrinsically for me. So I don't even, I didn't even realize I did that. <laughs> so. I'm watching thank everything. Thank uh, you for your observation. Oh, I should have, <laughs> should have repainted my nails this morning. You might notice they're a little bit chipped. Um, yeah, just kind of do that little swirl. So this is the pattern we're going to be doing throughout the whole thing. You'll notice, of course, that it's going to get shorter as we come across. Just imagine, you know, try to use a little bit of creativity and imagination. Like I said, we can always go over it again if we need to, but I'm going to get some more. If the paint is kind of congealing really quickly and it's not going on as smoothly as you would like, you can get just a corner, just a corner of your brush into your water and then pat it on your towel. Just like, just like so. Kind of helps loosen things up a little bit. But here we go. I'm going to get a little bit more and uh, just kind of come underneath of it. I am holding it. It's almost like I'm holding the paintbrush um, up top like this rather than using the breadth of it. You can if you want to. And just kind of play around with this, trying to stay as, you know, barrel shaped as possible, if you will. And we're just going to go around and do this, okay? Now, we are going to eventually get darker as we go out. Again, let me bring up my original. But there's no right or wrong here, okay? As long as we have it darker towards the side over here so that it creates that contrast in the cent well, off center here with the uh, bond, it'll be okay. But it's not, mine's not gonna look exactly like my original because the colors are not perfect because they're unevenly blended. So it all works out. How's it going? You breathing? Yeah, I'm okay. You're okay, all right. Uh, so we're just going to continue around and uh, sometimes I just start under different portions, but you can keep going the same way. This kind of also helps give me a guidance point to know how to clean things up. So it's almost like I'm skipping, if you will, every other line. I know that's not really a, the right, maybe the right way to say it, but in my mind, it's like I'm kind of starting, you'll notice I've got these gaps and it just kind of helps me to visualize where everything needs to go again no wrong way just kind of take your time we're just creating a circle a swirl let me get to what people were saying here uh, let's see 
Uh, Rogue Attraction, good morning. He said he's an alpha male. He's, he's an alpha. Most girls go for the bad boys. Let's be honest. Not true. You've been told a lie. Women are drawn to confidence. And unfortunately, most bad boys are confident. And that is the attraction. As you get older, it becomes less the attraction. <laughs> a sketchy guy wants to know which bond. Uh-oh, here it comes. Which bond for you? That would be uh, Sir Sean. Sean Connery. Yes. Yes. Uh, Sean Connery. The best bond set the bar uh, for all the future bonds. Um, Daniel Craig, I thought, did a great job with the modern modern day bond. Mm. I mean, the real question though is he, as your brother states, is he as good as Ethan Hunt? <laughs> the, no, let the war Ethan, start. <laughs> Ethan Hunt is nothing but a stunt man. Mm. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this Lee was smart picking a picture with not too many colors. Um, yeah, there's only going to be two colors in here. Three, four paints, but two colors. I'm going to be technical about it. Uh, Chris the Geek, good morning, says, Timothy Dalton is my favorite. Timothy Dalton was very good. Did not get a fair shot at the role. Um, there was a writer's strike, and they did not bring him back after his second film. Uh, I would have loved to have seen one or two more with timothy dalton i would have too i i like you said he didn't really get a fair shake but i enjoyed him for me he you know we talked about this on that one stream but you know i say i like pierce brosnan because he did have that you know that english gentleman whatever thing to it but timothy dalton i like too because to me he was a lot tougher than pierce brosnan but he wasn't quite as um not i don't want brazen like like quite the bulldozer like daniel craig in my right. opinion. Um, but I do like Ethan Hunt. I probably would pick... <laughs> I probably would pick the Mission Impossible franchise over Bond, if I'm being honest. Not that I don't like Bond. It's just... I, I, oh, I might... Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Gonna be one of those. <clears throat> <laughs> sorry, not sorry, says Sketchy Guy Nevada. I actually like Ethan Hunt, too. Uh... Drunk 3PO says, Ethan Hunt, American U.S. <laughs> he's a sloppy dresser. Well, he, yeah, yeah, he's not really focused on, on the outfit, is he? All right, so you can see here, I've pretty much sketched out, if you will, my swirl, just because I told you I kind of skip everyone. So this gives me a general idea of what it's supposed to look like, but I can always fix it if something's wrong. Yeah, I've got a lot going on here <laughs> okay <laughs> um it's okay if it's kind of weird and ugly looking it's supposed to just like people they don't come out looking beautiful but they eventually turn out nice so most of them anyway if you put enough effort into it <laughs> uh would have preferred clive owen over daniel craig um Maybe for looks per se i you know i think i was kind of surprised when daniel craig came out and as Bond, and it was like, but he doesn't look like Bond, and it was a whole different feel, like you had yeah, said before. There, there were issues with him because of his blonde hair. Mm -hmm. They called him James Blonde. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, come on. Wait, Holocron Library Fox says, you can totally be a crybaby man, but then you'll attract mothers, not a real partner. I don't know what... Um, I don't know what that's in reference to. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, you, I guess so, maybe. So, I had to explain to you about like the colors that we're going to be using here. Um, that when I looked at different movie posters and things like that um, for this particular scene... Some of them have like a gold, like a warm tint to it. And uh, one, one that I really kind of liked had a little bit of blue and purple in it. So you'll notice that it's not it's not right in your face. It's not super bright. It's just little little touches of, of purple in the hair. And it, so it kind of 
it warms it up and cools it down at the same time. So this is again where it's going to be preference and you're not going to really notice. We don't want it to be too strong. It's just, you know, it's a little bit more blue up in this corner and over here. But again, I want you to be able to have a lot of create uh, creative liberty with this. Do what looks right to you. <laughs> if you can. No, I'm, I'm sorry. I get like, are you in the zone? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, what am I going for here? Yeah. Uh, so I see that you have uh, gone over what looks um, for mine in the right side. Like you've gone all the way, mm -hmm. all the way around. Okay, so yep. I'm going to. All the way around. Same starting point, but all the way around. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Just kind of having that idea. Eventually, if you think about it, eventually this thing, if we kept going and making the tight the circle tighter, they would all end up in the middle as a swirl. So you just kind of imagine it's like that opening. Um, gotta go to work. Have fun. Thank you for stopping by. Thank you. Appreciate you. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and start filling in some spaces. But well, I don't want to go too far ahead. How much of your space do you have filled? Um, a lot, actually. Oh, good. Excellent. Okay. I didn't know if you were taking baby steps. I do recommend, you know, the nice long drag marks here because otherwise it'll look really choppy and it will look like a very janky gun. Um, like you got at a pawn shop or something or your neighbor's cousin in a back alley. So nice long. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so here we go. And I just kind of start in the spaces. Let me get a little bit more black. I want some, some differences here. So because the barrel, oh, I, I messed up a little bit. That's okay. I'm going to fix the circle here. The barrel, because, um, it being metallic and stuff like that, the, the lights will of course reflect differently. They'll have, we don't want it to be necessarily a perfect blend everywhere. So that way it looks like the light is somehow coming through. So you uh, grabbed a little more black to start I filling did. in some of the, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. And then, like I said, I can always go back over things if I feel like it's too dark in one spot. Right now we're just, we're filling in the space to see how it goes, adjusting as needed. Maybe I need to put a stronger uh, spin or twist on some of the angles. I'm I'm not painting at the angle that I did when I created the original piece because my camera's kind of in the way. So it's I'm hoping that this will turn out okay. <laughs> but uh, so far we're doing okay. And there's hopefully a little bit of that, that stress relief because knowing that with acrylic paint you can always fix things. Um, with just some more paint, just go over top of it. And if you need to, like over here, you could always come back the opposite way. If you don't have as much space to work with. But uh, so how long, how long has your YouTube channel been going? Good uh, morning. About a, year, about a year and a half now. Oh, okay. And you're over a thousand subscribers. I am. I just uh, hit, where am I at now? Just over 1,200 I'm at. Excellent. Yeah, 1,210 as of this morning. Excellent. Hopefully Appreciate it will increase all of a little them. bit. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what do you, do you primarily focus on fixing things, fashion? What would you say is maybe? So the, the entire concept was like, there's a lot of male influencers that have channels and some of them are like, they're big lot of subscribers but they're just like here's how you dress this is clothes you wear this is how you talk to girls uh, this is how you pick up women you know a lot of that and that's not what i'm about i'm about um helping yourself like just mm -hmm. it's all about feeling better about yourself so there's some fashion um i had a terrible sense of fashion when i was younger uh, <laughs> didn't we isn't that like a rite of passage like you you have to <laughs> it, i mean it, it was horrid i just <clears throat> i wore the baggiest jeans and an oversized shirt uh the philadelphia eagles jersey and mm. it, that's it i wore the same thing every day i had no idea what i was doing oh yeah um got embarrassed one time because i went on a work trip and we were all gonna go to a nice dinner i didn't know what that meant 
So, of course, I threw on my baggy jeans and Eagles jersey and everyone else is kind of like wearing a dress shirt. And I'm going, <laughs> you mean, I don't, what are you, are you supposed to dress up? I, I don't get it. Oh. Yeah. How bad. old were you, if I could ask? I was in my 20s. Was, oh, okay. I should have known yeah. better, but I, I, I knew nothing. I know nothing. <laughs> yeah. So from, from that point, I was like, okay, I got to make a change here. Something's mm -hmm. got to give. And um, the thing is, the, mm -hmm. I will say this, though. If you are comfortable in what you're wearing, I mean, go for it. The thing is, I wasn't comfortable. I was... I wanted something better. I just, I wanted to present myself differently and I was searching for something and um, I'm not knocking anybody for what they choose to wear. Um, I do sometimes. I, yeah. They're, they're... <laughs> I might be more judgmental than you though. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, John says, if you grew up in the eighties, the fashion was not great. Yeah, that's, that's very true. I guess it depends on who you talk to. There was the era of the mullet, was it not? Uh, yeah, that didn't, that never happened with me. Oh, okay. All right. No, I had the regular haircut. <laughs> you mean like the Danny Tanner full house haircut? Yep. Or okay. <laughs> you got it. <laughs> nice. Um, do you do you wear suits often? Not often. Um, they're good to have. Uh, any any uh, gentleman should should have one um uh, but the, you know you never know when you when you're going to need one you may have that, that special job interview you're going after or god forbid you know a funeral um but you know so my channel talks a, a bit about fashion and it, but it's it's all about self you know feeling better about yourself and then the other things that i touch on are just taking care of things that you have, like your car, your home, mm -hmm. um, you, you know, even like in the kitchen, you know, cooking, yeah. you know, TV dinners. Gosh, do they still have TV dinners? Of course. Yeah. It's America. But, you know, <laughs> how to make some better food for yourself, mm. which I've uh, grown an appreciation for as well. Lee makes fun of me all the time about my dress code. <laughs> Don't make fun, bro. I'm trying to help you. <clears throat> right. That's that's what that's what Big I difference. tell people. I'm just trying to help you. You know. <laughs> Sorry if it hurts, but <laughs> I just Believe... want what's best for you. <laughs> Believe it or not, like my <clears throat> my brother always had like the better stuff growing up. Like he had the better stuff, the better clothes and stuff. Like Jordan was the big thing, so he had all these like, oh okay, Michael Jordan clothes. I could he had like a job, and I didn't have that, so I was like, I would always go, should I get this shirt? Is this is this cool? Yeah, and he would just tell me to go away, <laughs> like a big older brother would. <laughs> yeah, he's not bothering me, bro. Sorry. Um, so how did uh, I think I think that's pretty self-explanatory, but for the sake of the interview, I've got to ask that what made you decide on the capable gentleman? Surely there were different names. Did you have several different names you were going through? Obviously, we understand now since you've explained your channel. You want it to be that men can be capable and more than just, you know, with James Bond, a lot of times it is, it's about the suits, it's about the car looking clean and fresh, but you'd like to go, like you just said about, you know, food and, and things like that as well. And, 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 and fixing things. So what made you decide on the capable gentleman though? Like the, the name, the actual name of the channel. Yeah. Um, I mean, were there several ideas you were playing around with? There was, um, I want, you know, being like that, like I said, kind of a jack of all trades or mm -hmm. handyman. Yeah, I was like the the handy gentleman. To me, being a, <laughs> being a gentleman was the the gentleman part is the the important piece of it. Yes, there's a a lack of kindness in the world, and mm -hmm. I, a lot of that can be attributed to upbringing, what's going right. on in homes, um, which just it breaks my heart to see such broken families and lost mm. youth. Yes, and um, there's, you know, having that, that lack of kindness, just, it just bothers me. And I wish I wanted to do something. And I think 
I found maybe an outlet that I can, I can help. So mm -hmm. the, the gentleman part, helping each other, being kind to each other, especially young men, I feel like they, they get attacked uh, when they're trying to express any kind of masculinity. Um, you know, I always say like, there's nothing wrong with me holding the door for you. Absolutely. Just because I hold the door for you doesn't, it's not me saying you're unable to hold the door for yourself. I'm not, I'm not saying yeah. you can't do it. I'm just saying I would like to do it for you. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a big difference. And I just a sign of respect or appreciation. Yes. Yes. And I think it's just lost in today's society. And I, I want to bring it back. Um, there's a, you know, lack of appreciation for, um, you know, like you, like you pointed out, I'm trying to be careful what I'm saying here about, don't want to cast a judgment on somebody for what they wear, but sometimes it says a lot about you. It does. It does. And, um, I don't, uh, nothing. Um, what am I trying to say here without being mean? Um, Okay, I got it. Uh, I shared the story <laughs> before, but um, I'm also a big Sopranos fan. <clears throat> so okay. there's a scene, if my brother's still here, he'll know what I'm talking about. There's a scene where they're in this fine dining restaurant and there's a there's a guy who brought his girlfriend in and he's wearing like a baseball cap and he's just kind of being a clown. And Tony goes over to him and just stares at him and tells him to take his hat off because they don't serve burgers and hot dogs here. It's a fine dining establishment. Mm -hmm. And the guy's like, leave me alone. I'll do what I want, you know? And of course there's probably some colorful language there, but <laughs> but um, he just stared. And the guy finally, <laughs> I guess he got scared and, and took his hat off. <clears throat> and, uh, and then he just said, you know, thank you. And he looked at his girlfriend. I was like, Hey, how you doing? And then walked away from the table. Um, but the, you know, and then the service came over to Tony and was like, thank you for doing that. There's just people just, they don't even respect uh, this fine dining establishment. And I found that if I've gone to the nicer places and have dressed at their request, um, they treat you a lot different. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that that's like, Oh, I want to get treated different. So I need to dress up. You're just respecting the establishment. Yeah. Um, you're respecting what they put into it, the, the quality of food, the quality of service, the it's, and, and they do appreciate that and they return yes. that. Yes. Um, I agree with what you're saying. I mean, like you said, anybody can, let me just bring this on over here for just a second. I, I do like what Dawn said up here too, is um, dressing to the occasion. I'm usually a t-shirt and jeans gal, but I wore a sparkly dress for my 40th birthday party. It was at a catering hall. And <clears throat> yeah, there is something to be said. You know, like people like to throw out this Bible verse of God looks on the heart, man looks on the outward appearance. Well, because, and that's true in the sense of who you need to be as a person, but there's so much truth in that yeah people are going to judge you based on what you look like now there is a difference between you know if you for example if you especially well not even especially for men too if you have hair loss right you don't have a full head of hair uh -oh. and that's some well and i'm just saying like it's like it's some kind of condition that it's out of your control but you still make it look good but people will judge you because you have hair loss that's wrong right that's wrong but if you decide, yeah, if you decide to show up somewhere and your clothes, you know, are stained and uh, I mean, I can speak for that myself, I'll all of a sudden find random paint splotches somewhere on my clothing that I didn't even wear when I was painting. But, um, but yeah, if you go somewhere and you expect the same level of respect wearing I'm just going to be real with you wearing trash and you're going yeah. to a fine dining place and you expect people don't judge me. I wear what I want. Right. Sorry, the world doesn't work like that. Yeah. And it's not fair to expect that because you just decided you didn't feel like putting any effort into your outfit. Yes. Now, I again, agree with there, that. there are days where a lot of us don't feel like putting any effort into our our outfits. I, I, I will say, like you said, it's upbringing as well. I had my grandmothers from both sides of the pond, you know, old school gals. And... um 
if you wanted, that was the thing. If you wanted to be a respectable member of society, if you wanted to people to, especially as women, if you wanted to be treated as a lady, you needed to look and act like one. Now, that's not saying we all had to walk outside looking like, you know, you know, John F. Kennedy's wife or anything like that. <laughs> but being a lady also had to do, of course, has to do with your, your characteristics and how you treat other people, but how you treat yourself, kind of like you're saying, how, how do you man manage yourself? How do you take yeah. care of yourself? Let's people know how you value yourself. And then somehow it's just, it's part of the human experience that we do. We all react differently towards other people. Um, some people have a stigma towards nicely dressed people because they think that those people think they're better than them. And that's not always the case. Um, some people are just arrogant. Of course you need to, again, it's all in a balance, but yes. I think it's important to dress nicely. It's so funny. A couple of years ago, <clears throat> I went to the vet, took the dog to the vet and I was wearing like a jean skirt. Because, you know, sometimes you wear them. I was wearing a jean skirt and I just had like a shirt and I was wearing like a scarf or something, right? Like this. And I went to the vet to get my dog checked up. And the receptionist was like, oh, where are you going all dressed up? I was like, here? <laughs> 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 I, I didn't think I looked fancy, but I think it's because I was wearing a skirt because I didn't have to, it wasn't a formal occasion. So people are just taken by surprise when a woman wears a dress or a skirt, which is kind of sad. I think that it's like, all it took was a jean skirt for people to look at me and be like, Oh, she's fancy. <laughs> now, but how did it make you feel when she said that? Um, confused. <laughs> I mean, was there any part of it that was like, wow, I just got a compliment. I didn't even yeah it does it makes me it makes me feel good that it's like okay i look presentable not that i was doing it necessarily yeah. for other people i was and i wasn't you know there's this balance like i wasn't doing it for people's approval i just want people to know i'm a good person <laughs> i don't know that might not i think it's a tick a tricky area because again you don't want to spend your life worried about what people think about you but you do have to be concerned to a degree of what people think about you, what you, what it says about you. Because yeah, if you're trying to get a job, if you're trying to impress somebody's parents because you've fallen in love with their daughter or something, what do you do? You dress nicely because you want to look respectable. If yeah. you go, a lot of people, when they still go to church, they dress nicely because they're like, I want to give my best to God. Sunday best. Yeah. Sunday best. Um, you know, when you go to a business meeting, when you go to, like you said, a funeral, it's all about showing respect to others as yes. well and then um, the other piece of that is showing respect to yourself because i could tell you yeah when i start when i made a change when i made a change and started dressing a little more stylishly um i felt better about myself i was just like my it did it changed my confidence and that's something i i struggle with self-confidence mm. um and it's a battle to this day no matter what i what i'm doing but when i'm I give this appearance, um, you know, I'm put together or whatever, but I, in, in my head, it's a struggle. And then when I dress better, I, f I feel better. I'm, I'm like, I walk around with my head held a little higher and, yes. um, that that's a feeling I don't want to let go of. Mm -hmm. So there's a self-respect there too. Uh, yes. Yes. And, and, and kind of like it, it all kind of circles back to different elements. Like we were saying earlier that, you know, women are drawn to the bad boys or whatever like that. No, women are drawn to men with confidence. Yeah. And what a lot of times what you wear makes you confident and then ergo makes you attractive. It's just it's just the way it is. Now, again, if you don't want you, you nobody says you have to wear a three piece suit. I see Rogue was like, I will say expecting a, a suit at a theme park location is a bit much. But, you know, that's a that's again going extreme. Then you're then yeah. you're kind of weird. Right. Because yeah. it's like who would do that? But it's if like you wearing see... toe shoes or something like that. You're just weird. <laughs> don't be hating on the toe shoes. <laughs> 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 but I mean, like if I will be honest, when I went to the theme park, you know, a lot of people and there's no hate, no disrespect to that when you're wearing, you know, just a simple T-shirt and some shorts and you're walking around in your sneakers. But I did see some men that were wearing like button up shirts, like short sleeve button up shirts. And you're like, oh, he's fancy. Like, it's nice. It's just yeah. because it's just it's unusual. I mean, I know I remember on <clears throat> Twitter a while ago, I reposted a video 
of this woman. And they were talking about how, what is it? Let me move them back over here, continue painting. It was this beautiful lady that was in this lovely, simple black dress. And she had her hair and a nice low ponytail. And she had a hat on to the side. To the side. And I think she may have had like a clutch or something. And she's wearing her high heels. And she's just walking down the street. And they're video recording all the expressions of people as they suddenly notice her walking by. And it's like, yeah, it's number one, it's a... People will stare because people are like, they're not staring because she's beautiful. They're staring because it's it's unusual. Yeah. Well, yeah, because it's kind of unusual to see women put together. Anymore. <laughs> Nobody dresses like that. I don't dress like that. Um, maybe if I go to church. Well, like if I might wear something like that if I go to church. Um, but yeah, you know, people like a like it when we look nice and attractive and it's it all depends on what your purpose is for too you know if you're just doing it to nab the eye of somebody that's the wrong reason Absolutely. but if you, but if you're keeping yourself clean and nice because eventually you would like to find somebody and it's just now part of your outfit of what you wear then that's that's different too um you know, everybody has different opinions. I saw some people in the chat saying, I primarily wear t-shirts and stuff. But are you clean? You know, you can wear t-shirts all the time. But are you clean? That's really all it comes down to. <laughs> it's like, we just want people that look and smell nice, you know, even if that means Crocs and t-shirts. Just, just please smell, smell nice. nice. Just smell nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I just think, and I also think there's just, there's time and place too. I mean, that that's a big yes factor in it there's a time and place i i wouldn't wear a suit to a theme park that's crazy um however they have uh they do <laughs> i dress have up some... for other people because they don't want to see me naked so this is also a good reason <laughs> yeah yeah i'll take that on i'm sorry i didn't mean to cut you off that's okay i forgot what i was gonna say oh, see, uh, no, that's they, my bad. there are um man when i go on when I'm working this side of the canvas, like my, it's not cooperating because I'm not left-handed. Yeah. And so I, I, it's, I don't do this out of spite, but a little part of me is just like, ha, now you guys know what it's like uh, <laughs> for left-handed people to follow right-handed tutorials. Um, but there are, what I was going to say was there are, um, <laughs> Not, what does he say? I don't yeah. care how well you dress if your body stinks. You can't find a time or what? Try that again. Please don't stink. Yes, always good advice, no yes. matter who you are. Yeah, and there are things that you can do to help that. Of course. Besides a shower. Um, I saw in your cologne video where you were doing your little spraying and stuff like that and where you were supposed to be spraying the correct way and you had like, was it three squirts around the neck and then one on the wrist? Was that what I saw? So I think <clears throat> there is, yeah, yeah. The one in the, you're talking about the short in the short I did, uh, it's. It's two, yeah, three around the neck and then one actually in, in the front. So I guess four around the neck, really. Okay. Uh, one, one, one spray each, uh, each point, just because if you don't wear enough, what's the point? And if you wear too much, you're making everybody pass out. So it's just. Oh, yeah. I, I know plenty like in high school, like when I used to watch kids and it was adjacent with the high school and stuff like that, they would all make fun of the boys because they would come out of the bathroom just with this waft of Axe body spray. Axe. And it would literally Axe. follow them down the hallway. <laughs> and it was repulsive because it was so strong. Yes. Uh, you can't you can't be overpowering like that. You got to chill out. Uh, but but it's it's actually different from for everybody because we all got we all have different skin types and mm -hmm. um, you may have a little more oily skin you may have drier skin and that impacts the cologne. I have one. Uh, I've got skin that just it absorbs it and so the longevity of a cologne just it doesn't last. 
Yeah. Uh, it doesn't matter what it's made out of. Some last more than others, but it just it doesn't project. It doesn't last. I don't know. I'm cursed, I guess, when it comes to that. <laughs> cursed. You just carry a little. They do make those little travel size ones. Just, you know, carry it with you. Oh, I, yeah. Yeah. Just reapply. Oh, always. I, I feel like my um, perfume never lasts, but they do say that's because you get accustomed to the smell when it's on you. Yeah. So then you no longer can smell it. And this is most likely why teenagers overdose on perfume and cologne is because they've sprayed so much on their body that after like five minutes, they just can't smell it anymore. So they think it's not there. And then bit more on there um quickly i have filled up my space pretty happy with it it's still kind of bright over on this side but i'm not mad about that i might darken it up a little bit but i'm going to start incorporating my colors i'm not going to be rinsing my brush okay. um, i don't know if you're at this point yet but i'm going to add a little bit more white and i'm just going to start off with some blue just a little bit on the corner not too much here we go and I'm just going to find where I would like to put it. I recommend maybe starting off to the side. Whenever you're trying something new and incorporating these different colors, you don't necessarily want to start right in the middle because if it doesn't work out, that's automatically where everybody's eye goes. Somewhere off to the side is better. I don't really want to have blue over here. So I'm just going to start over here and see what happens and just kind of let it merge with the colors that I have. It's just meant to be like an accent in here. It's not supposed to be too much. Now my circle has kind of become a little janky too. I will admit that. And I can always clean that up with some, some white, or I can just kind of carefully make the size of the circle a little smaller. So. Uh, mine's become janky as well. Yes. So, and I'm going for more, I think mine looks more like a a pretty cool looking tunnel than a gun barrel. Yeah. You know, and that, that will but, happen. But I like it. Good. Well, that's, and that's, what's the most important thing for sure <clears throat> excuse me um i was gonna say oh so I, I, maybe you know maybe you don't i'm just gonna go ahead and throw this out here and ask but is after watching your your reel is application perfume for different for men than it is for women it's a good question um okay curious some things i would say yes uh as far as the actual placement i i don't know I, they say like don't definitely don't rub anything cologne perfume. yeah because it breaks up the molecules or something yep yes you don't want to do that um but i've some people at like department stores when they're pushing a scent they're like oh spray it behind your knees like, your knees why why oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a hot point a hot spot on your body it will really project this and maybe to midgets <laughs> like, uh, okay <laughs> uh that's a hard pass for me i didn't spend this much money on cologne to spray it on my knees spray my knees <laughs> <laughs> um because the way i was taught <clears throat> was yeah, you're supposed to spray on the wrist and then you kind of like pat it together so it goes onto the other side. And then it's meant to be one spray for both sides of the neck. And then for women, you're supposed to spray the chest in between their area yeah. because that is supposed to be the hot zone or one of them because obviously, you know, we're radiating more heat. I just didn't know, but you know, when men and women are so fascinating because it seems like there's so many things that are similar, but little things that are, make up the differences. Yeah. Um, and so like, even they say when it comes to um, core body temperature, if you're outside in the snow and you're in some remote place in Russia and all of a sudden you can't get inside that, men when what the the body does what the blood does with the body it goes to like their extremities like their arms and legs and things like that so that they continue working and doing things whereas a woman's body um it naturally tries to keep the re reproductive system warm because it's a nurturing you know maternal instinct for your body to do that and i think that stuff's so fascinating just showing the differences between men and women on so many different levels um <laughs> You got to say it with your chest. What are you talking about, Lulu? <laughs> say what with your chest? Um, <clears throat> but I don't know if you've incorporated any color. If you can see on mine, it's just, just the whisper of blue. It's nothing obnoxious. It's not prominent. 
this is again totally up to you what your preference is you can have it as bold and vibrant as you would like but all right i'm getting ready to incorporate some color and you said leave the brush Mm -hmm. like white and black whatever and then just a little touch yeah i would reapply a little bit of white because we are trying to have the front of the barrel the brightest so up reapply a little bit of white and then just a little bit of color because you can always add more and then when i start same type of pattern start with the white side of the brush and then work the color or yeah i i had the white portion closer to the circle if that's what you mean and then yes. i just dragged out mm -hmm. gotcha okay a little bit of color and once you get that vibe, get that feel for it, then you can incorporate a little bit of the purple. The purple, I like to put um, more towards this side, like stronger blue on this side, a little bit more purple on this side. But again, kind of go with your heart. Follow your nose. Um, <laughs> uh, it came from the heart, Kevin. Uh, it came from the Kevin Hart comedy show. Be confident in what you say. Ah, okay. So, so since we're talking, of course, about being a gentleman and looks and things like that, and you were also saying about like holding the door for people, you know, it seems to be this, um, how do I say it? This epidemic of misunderstanding, number one, between men and women, um, especially with these younger generations. Like you said, a lot of people not knowing how to behave properly and how to be a gentleman and things like that. Yeah. Um, but with this common misunderstanding between men and women being around everywhere, have you ever encountered a situation where somebody, particularly a woman, has been outraged? Not at me. No, it hasn't happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm just curious, like how common is that? Does that actually happen a lot? Or is this another portion of the media that they're just like, women don't like it when men hold the door open? I love it. It's, yeah, it's that. It's it's definitely that it's the media uh, push. Uh, I have not encountered it personally. No, thank, thank the Lord. I don't know uh, how I'd react. I I mean I think I would, I think I would challenge and just say, what what's the problem? Uh, I'm just holding a door for you. I'm just trying to be nice. Yeah. 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 I don't know why that became such a problem because then you have women like myself and many others where we're just like, we're just waiting for a man to hold the door open. For well, and yeah, now, and now men are afraid to do it. Right. So they're just like, I'm not going to do that. I don't, oh, okay. She'll yell at me. Um, I and remember then women are like, gosh, what's wrong with him? What a jerk. Right. Can't right. Win. I mean, women are already difficult to please as it is. Now we've just made it even harder. Um, that's, that's not necessarily true, but, um, the stigma you know but it's just it seems really strange where again i think it's just it's out of balance where women women want to be appreciated and want men to acknowledge that they can do anything okay yeah all right it's great but then they also want men to treat them like a treasure you know like something valuable and yeah. little things like opening the car door oh uh, you know holding out the chair you know, all this kind of stuff. These are just, it's amazing. It is so amazing what these little actions mean. Like, it doesn't seem like a lot. I don't know necessarily what it is for a man that is the equivalent of holding the door open. But it it is like, you talk to pretty much any woman and it just does something to them when a man's like holding the door open for them. It just, it's the simplest way to show respect or not even respect. It's just like, I don't even know what the word is. Value. Like, yeah. Value. Yeah. It's, hey, it's good morning, little Spidey. Definitely a, a respect thing. Like, just, it's just a kind gesture. It's something so simple and it's effortless. Yeah. Yeah, it, it, it is. It really doesn't take much. It's the, one of the nicest, easiest things you can do for another person. Even for a woman holding a door for a man, if she sees his hands are full or whatever, I've yet to meet a man that didn't appreciate me holding the door open for him if he had his hands full. Especially <laughs> when I we're bringing in the groceries, there. because there could be 15 bags and every guy is going to do it in one shot. Oh, yeah. I grab every single bag and try to make one trip. You don't make two trips when you're bringing in groceries. That's that's where my masculinity shines through. Yeah, I I hate <laughs> making multiple trips to the car. 
Uh, giving a man, Cor, Cajun Corey says, giving a man a compliment is like holding the door for a woman. We don't forget that compliment. Is that true? That is a hundred percent accurate. Okay. Look, there is nothing. I'm, I mean, it, like I was saying earlier, when I changed my appearance and, and I started getting compliments when I started wearing cologne, um, and you know, when I was growing up, it was like Dracar Noir and everybody had it and they bathed in it. And um, sounds like the name of a dragon. From where? Dracar Noir. I don't know. I've never but, heard that before. Oh, you said it's like... you said it sounds like a name of a dragon. OK, I thought you said, oh, that was. Um, but oh. I just um, you get that compliment and you're just like, oh, yeah. man. Wow. This that, okay. that's awesome. I want to do it again. So then the next day, you know, you 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 think about what am I going to wear today? Maybe I can get another one. You know, mm -hmm. um, it it's incredible. The other thing, <clears throat> if especially if you're in a relationship, is supporting your mm. your man. There there is nothing nothing better than having the support uh, from your lady. When she's I've got your back. Too. When yeah. she's got your back. Um, Man, forget it. No, I can I can take on the world. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I've I've heard that. Like men, even in the simplest things, just want to be want to be praised. And it's not like they think that they're better than other people. It's more of like they just they too want to be acknowledged and appreciated for even the little things that they do. So yeah. see, it's like these little things. Like if a man holds the door open for a lady or just says, hey, let me let me get that for you. Let me carry that for you. That's not difficult. That doesn't cost any money. And it means the world. So being kind to, I think where women have a difficult time with the reverse, maybe, correct me if I'm wrong, because I mean, like, I ain't no expert for sure. But it's like, I've been taught and I've heard a lot of people as well that you have to be careful giving compliments to men because they might think you're attracted to them. And so women oftentimes will forego complimenting men or praising things that they do because men have a habit of misinterpreting their intentions. Do you feel that's true? Not necessarily. Women don't do that either. Like if I started giving a woman compliments, she wouldn't think, oh, great. Now he's got a thing for me. <sighs> uh, it depends on the guy. Yeah. I've gotten compliments from men, but their demeanor, the way they presented it was, um, they'd just be like, oh, that looks great on you. It's great. And then they just, it's like, it's casual versus you can kind of tell when the dude's like, you know, like, hey. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. I've, that's just what I've been, been told that men tend to misinterpret on that factor more than women uh i don't know i think it i mean i think it depends i think it depends on how forward the compliment is mm -hmm. if it's just like hey you look really nice today or wow you smell good or i don't see how that can that wouldn't like i wouldn't go home like thinking all night i wonder if do you think that has to do with the desperation of a man or, or a woman, but like since we're talking on this way, do you think if a man is more desperate, he's more inclined to believe or lean that way rather than logically thinking it through? It's possible. Um, I think that. Okay, so let's go old school. It was always yeah. like the the guy has to ask out the woman, right? Right. Traditionally, proposals happen where the guy asks the woman, right? So. Mm -hmm. Do you change that now? Is that is that the element that adds to this discussion, right? Of is there thoughts behind this? So if a woman starts throwing that compliment, uh, like is she going to ask me uh, to go out? Is she going to push to start the relationship? I mean, I'm I'm a traditional guy. I'm like I mm -hmm. like it when gentlemen step up, when men step up, and oh yeah, and um, you know, present themselves in a way and ask the question. Um, but I think there's, you know, I do think there's hesitation. I think there's, yeah, there's fear in, in all that. And I think a lot of it has to do as well is that number one, people don't know how to communicate very well to each other anymore in the outside world or even online. And people no longer know how to safeguard 
their thoughts or their emotions in that if the guy or the girl ends up not being interested in you, you hooked so much of your feelings and your thoughts and, and everything's like, well, maybe he did say that he, he, he said that because he liked me, you know, that high school crap. Yeah. And we just don't mature enough out of it. Right. Like it's just yep. kind of, I think maybe it's just a sign of maturity. Um, I will say over here that rogue, I disagree with you. Women lead men on more than men. I believe in my experiences, that's completely false. I believe it's equal. Um, I think it's just the way that it's done. Um, and it also, I don't know. I, there's a lot of factors there. Uh, things are very different now. I would have said maybe back in the day, but at the same time, it, it might just be more portrayed that women lead men on because maybe they're more open about, it. I don't know. I'm not really sure that I feel like there's a difference there, but I, and from my personal experience, that is, that is not true that women lead men on more than they lead women. But um, there's, mm -hmm. I was going to say that there are, I mean, men aren't perfect. There's, there are men out there that ruin it for the, for the, for the good guys. You of know, course. Guys same that, thing with women. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, they, they just, it, they're p pigs, I guess. <laughs> they're jerks. Yeah, they're James Bond. Oh. <laughs> I just trying to irritate you. <laughs> I see your, what you did there. Your face, so great. Um, okay, so I am pretty much done with. Oh, excuse me. I'm pretty much done with my backdrop here. Um, just going to put a final few touches here and there. I like. The colors where they're at it's not again it's not a perfect replica of my original but i i think you would get the point once we put let me just go ahead and take my little dude put him right in there you know right away what this is and that's the whole point so is yours coming along you like it i, I am i'm i am um Dawn says there's also body language. If they are saying it in your personal space, then yes, it's flirty. Boundaries are important. This is true. I do believe Very much that. so. Um, again, I think a lot of it has to do with the fact with between like online dating and again, not a lot of the people going out and about anymore, or because of this rise in modern day feminism and the lack of masculinity, we just don't know how to interpret it signals anymore and we do a lot of projection onto other people and then we get mad when those predictions projection uh, projections are false because we have a problem with pride i mean i feel like it's just kind of full-blown all over the place women don't know what women are anymore men don't know what men are anymore and we don't even know how to interact with each other yeah. if you don't know who you are as a person in the body that god gave you how are you supposed to treat and react to other people is kind of how i think I agree with you. I agree with you. It it is tough out there. <laughs> it's really, really tough out there nowadays. Yeah, people are very different these days. We're, we're we're the same, and we're different all at the same time. Like we have the same feelings, in down inside, but we have different thoughts towards these feelings. I think is kind of how it is. Biologically, we're always going to always be the same. You know, mentally, the way the brain processes for male and females, but we have twisted thoughts about things now and um so we don't know really again don't really know how to react to one another um holocron library fox says i don't think you should give doubt that much power over your actions if you feel like giving an honest compliment do it if it is uh, mistaken the receiver might not be compatible on a social level yeah you know I mean, I've given women awkward compliments before. I just try to be nice, but I'm like, I need to let that woman know. I've I've seriously done this. I need to let that woman know that I think her eyebrows look fantastic. <laughs> and they appreciate it. She appreciated it. You know, they're taken by surprise when you are kind to them, which is sad. It's the kindness um, factor. And why is it so hard to do? Why is it so hard to go up to someone and be like, uh, excuse me, I really like whatever, or you look whatever because nowadays like it's your weirdo if you do something like that it's just perceived in such a way that it's it's a shame i yeah mm -hmm. i think you i think you hit the nail on the head we don't know how to communicate anymore it's easy to communicate behind a keyboard and uh through a text message yeah but, but you're not uh, getting that social experience right face to face is a whole nother element and mm -hmm. uh adds a lot more weight to whatever it is you're going to say. And I feel a lot of times the things that people say behind a keyboard, they wouldn't dare say it to someone's face. Oh, of course they don't have not. the guts to say it to someone's face. They don't have the courage to say mm -hmm. it 
to someone's face. And if you don't have that uh, courage uh, to say it to somebody's face, don't say it behind a keyboard. Yeah, because that's not really who you are. You're exactly. nobody special if you can just yell at, yell at somebody online that you never have to actually deal with them and the consequences thereof on a regular basis. Um, on average, I think that men manipulate less than women. Again, um, that's speculatory. And from my experience, it is not true. Um, so it, I, it might just depend on where you're at, uh, this, the, the cultural system that is where you're surrounded by. I, I really think it's just, it's across the board. Um, women in this time have higher body counts than men on average. Not saying it's a rule, just looking at how the media makes it seem. This is true. Um, you know, like I watch those little snippets on Twitter where it's the whatever podcast and it's constantly the same, pretty much the same group of women that they keep asking these questions. And they're they're young women, right? They're like, they look like they're like 23, you know? And I mean, let's be real, 23-year-olds, no no disrespect necessarily, but, you know, they just, like, we just, we don't have our life figured out at 23. And <laughs> Does anybody? Yeah, does anybody? Sometimes I don't have, look, have my life all together. But, um... <laughs> I just, I look at that and I see a lot of the comment sections are like, yeah, women are just so to totally like this. And I'm like, um, not all of them are like this. Yeah. Not all of them are little bimbos with no brain cells to rub together. Not all women are constantly seeking men for self or for sexual gratification. But the media does make it seem like this is the continuous thoughts of people. Now, I will agree that the the definitely it's more prominent than it's ever been, um, for sure. Like the 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 brakes have been taken off on on all of that, and there is a huge misconception between or misunderstandings between yeah men and women about how to treat one another, and it's just so sad. But it's again, it's one of those things: is the media pushing that, or is that the day to day life? You know, is it within the circle that you are? with you know like i said my experiences men have been more manipulative than women but that mm. might not be the case for somebody else that doesn't necessarily mean that statistically either side is true yeah it's just whatever the media wants us to, to push it's also dependent on how your person on your personality an introvert is going to be less willing to show their feelings than an extrovert it's true and then you have yeah, an omnivert true. like myself who can express their feelings often and then live in regret <laughs> for doing that all the time. Gage and Corey says, speaking from experience, fear of rejection is a thing for sure. I have that myself as well. I feel you. It shatters my confidence when I finally work up the nerve to ask someone out only to be rejected. Yeah. yeah. And then you kind of feel foolish for having taken that step when you really right. shouldn't. There's a... I so I'm a, I'll speak a little bit about myself. I, I when I have these conversations with people, um, and I say something like, you know, I struggle with self confidence, and they're like, "What? How, you? How? You know?" I'm like, "Yeah." There's I call it this little voice. There's this little voice in my head that I can quiet down sometimes, but then there's that like like you said, Corey, the fear of rejection. If it happens, that voice gets so loud. And it's yes. just shouting in my head, you are no good. You are not worth it. You mm -hmm. screwed up. You are a loser. Why would you even think that you had a shot? That voice is so dangerous. And um, it's it's a scary thing. And it's a battle to shut it up. And um, you, you're spot on. That fear of rejection can be a um, a very damaging thing to one's confidence. And it's just something that... You've got to figure out how to quiet down that voice. Um, mm -hmm. It may not ever go away, but you can make it very quiet. And um, it, it's a it's a challenge. It's definitely a challenge for me. Sometimes I even like so even with this project right here, when when Tabitha and I started talking about doing this, that voice immediately was like, don't do it. It's going to it's going to be terrible. You're, you're not you're not going to be able to 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 do it. <clears throat> it won't come out right. You're going to, you're going to make a fool of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I, but I would really like to do something. And, you know, and I'm, I'm trying to battle this voice in my head and it just wouldn't shut up. And it took some time. And I'm like, I'm going to, I'm going to persevere. I'm going to. Yeah. I mean, I asked you last year and you just got back with me. Yeah. It's, no, it's it, not true. <laughs> <laughs> we're speaking truth. Yeah. But 
yeah, it was it was uh, in scheduling too that that played a part, I, but yeah. but it was a battle, and and it's like having to shut that voice up is hard, and you got to face it, and you've got to fight it, and um, then so here we are, and I'm gonna show you what I put together, and it's scary for me. It's still scary. That voice is still there, but it's like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I'm bigger and I'm better than that stupid voice in my head. I'm gonna. Yeah, you me. are. So just keep out there. Keep keep going. Keep fighting. Uh, this is going to be Lee at the end of the day. <gasps> Did that actually work? I think that actually worked. That, that, that actually worked. This is working. <laughs> or, and this is usually how I feel at the end of it. Not only do I spend the rest of the video feeling like an idiot, I also spend the rest of the video looking like an idiot, and you're not going to be able to unnotice it. <laughs> It's just how it is because i'm like every time i tell you every time i do these painting streams i'm nervous too because it's like what if my painting looks like crap and i am the art teacher i'm the one who made this painting yeah but you just have to and it is a lot of times these paintings don't turn out to what i would prefer them to look like because it's there's a time you know time crunch or you know i am i'm painting at an awkward angle right now because of the way my camera is positioned over top of the canvas for the viewers so it's yeah. like that has a huge effect on the outcome and so you do you have to just tell yourself just do it whatever it's all good yep. and I, I like what somebody else said the forgotten man says confidence uh wait no excuse me c4c hello by the way says rejection builds character and uh, it does and confidence it, it is harder to find when masculinity is being considered toxic by some this can also go for femininity if women feel uncomfortable being feminine like it's wrong or it's considered nowadays it's like it's like you're less than anything if you're a feminine woman it means you're displaying weakness yeah and so if you want to be feminine and people are telling you that's it's girly you know it's just like and they look down on you um it's hard to feel confident in femininity as well. See, that's what I'm saying. It's on both sides of the spectrum. We're just out of whack and we don't know how to talk to each other. Yeah. And masculinity, toxic. Oh my God. I, I, that, that kills me. I hate that. I don't understand <laughs> why that is. I don't get it. I don't get that position in society that masculinity is toxic. And it's, it's, it's out there. It is all over the place in pop culture and movies masculinity is just you know the men are just you know look at look at the last jedi i mean every male character in that film is just an idiot um and it, it, i can go on and on and on we can find you know that films like that where it's just the mm -hmm. men are stupid and it's a shame mm -hmm. why does it have to be like that even yeah even bond okay we're talking about painting bond there's a movement to turn bond into a girl into a woman right why right why 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 would you do, what's the point of doing why that? not lee tell us tell us why because not why can't you just create a new character because that's to me that's sell. lazy that's like oh bond is established and he's male so let's just change it so he's a woman just write a new mo write a new character put out a new movie and let it be successful on its own why mm -hmm. take what's already out there it's just it doesn't make any sense to me I think it's part of the movement, but it's also honestly kind of thinking of the fear of rejection. I think a lot of the creatives right now over in that part of the world, there's no more risk taking. You notice that there's no more risk taking with creativity. Yeah. So they're afraid. I would think they're afraid to make a strong female character in her own movie because it might do badly. So the easiest solution, the cop out, is to take already a beloved franchise and turn it female. <laughs> but I don't know if that's, but see, in my view, that's not necessarily true. I mean, it's true what you're saying, but like I was a big fan of strong female leads, like the yeah. Alien movies. Ripley mm -hmm. was one of my favorite characters. Everybody loves Sigourney Weaver. <laughs> she was incredible as a lead in that franchise. I watch aliens now i'll watch it with jay and we'll just sit there and crack up laughing and watch ripley just take out these aliens it's it's awesome yeah. princess leia was a strong character in the star wars franchise Zena warrior princess as cheesy as that show was right <laughs> oh yeah i mean i don't know it's but hang on let's go before we continue with anything so i'm gonna go ahead and take my pencil okay so yeah do i have to bring my canvas down flat to make this easier I would strongly recommend you do, and you're okay. going to figure out where you want to place the little dude, 
And uh, of course, I would recommend somewhere towards the middle, but maybe you could even have them down a little bit further from like closer to the bottom if you wanted to, just so that there's like some, some height. We're going to add some shadow. Again, trust your instincts. You know what looks good to you. Don't overthink it, of course. And right. um, some, somebody else was saying Sarah Connor. Yeah, there's been. Oh, yeah. This, this is yes. why the media is lying. You can't believe the media on so many aspects. They are lying to you. It's uh, the same thing with the whole diversity representation. When growing up, it was everywhere. It, it didn't matter if it was puppet shows or whatever. Diversity has actually been in the in our cinema for decades. Sarah Connor and is awesome. Sarah Great Connor point. and all these others. Female ha females have been strong leads for decades. Uh, so I'm holding this little womanizer down and just outlining him. <laughs> yes. I, I'm glad you're finally seeing the light. He's flawed. He's flawed. He like is. He is flawed. I think what I, I gets on my nerves is that it's not so much that he's flawed. I can have great sympathy towards or <laughs> empathy towards flawed people, but it's more of like I guess because it's always like the, he gets praised for for all the wrong things if you will like oh he gets all the chicks i'm like yeah he's a love him and leave him kind of guy he doesn't even love him but you know it's again it's like it could be he's, anything with like princesses and stuff like that for females and it just there's a balance that needs to be there he's know. just a, he's a smooth guy mm -hmm. yeah a succubus he's, he's smooth he's <laughs> suave he's charming it's the charming element for me um, just knows how to talk to people and has a way that when See, they, that's the when, worst part for me. When they leave the conversation, he's like, they're always like, wow, what a charming gentleman. Mm hmm. And that's how he gets them. <laughs> See, and that's where I have the problem. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't listen to him. He's a tool. <laughs> He's just trying to gather information. He's doing his job. Sure. For for queen and country. Well, mm -hmm. king and country now. Yeah. Helps to sleep around, too. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I'm just... He's a fictitious character and everything. It's, it's all good. Uh, the worst funny, tracing yeah. job I've ever done. Okay, I think. Well, I'm, let me again. Like I, I explained to you before the show, let me be honest with you. Let me pull this up here. Look at my tracing. He looks like a a weird kind of monkey. Like this does not. This does not scream elegance. This doesn't look good at all. But that's okay. We's about to now. I do recommend keeping. Let's back up here. Keeping him close by. Okay. Okay. Because what we're going to be doing here is kind of what, what you might consider or what's called blocking out. Okay. So what we're going to do, I know this can be a little bit, it'll be a little bit uh, difficult because we don't have a clear line in here where his arm, other arm is, right? We don't know where that's at per se. So we right. keep him nearby. And what we're going to look for are the darkest and the brightest um, points of the sketch or the image, right? So we're going to switch right. over. I'm going to put my, I hope, I, I didn't say that earlier, but when you're done, make sure you put your, your brush in your cup of water here so the paint doesn't harden on the bristles. Oh, I didn't do that great. Fail. You have failed this city. See? <laughs> it's never That's right. Uh, for this project, I bought like 10 of everything, so... See, that's the true bond attitude right there. If I if I mess up with one and it gets broken, I can just leave it behind because I can always get another one. You got to be ready. <laughs> got to be ready. Anything could happen. Can we get an update on your painting? Would that be okay? Uh, sure. Yeah. You ready? I'm ready. Ooh. Oh. Ooh, I like your style. It kind of has like this graphic novel vibe to it. Yeah. That's a more great... Like a, more like a interesting like tunnel more than the rifling that's kind of what i was i like it kind of thinking about mine is darker and again there's no nothing wrong with this mine's darker yours is a little bit lighter you have like a tighter curl on yours too which is yes. actually pretty cool um that's excellent all right thank you so you lie like, nice. let me also show you again the original one if you look really closely whoops if you look closely it's not a lot of detail it looks like it when it's further away 
It all comes together in the end. Yeah. You look at it real close. Whoops, sorry. You know, his, he doesn't have a face. It's all about the highlighting and the shadows, and there'll be a little bit of blending in between. So you see where I have my darkest points and where I have my brightest points. So again, we're going to keep him handy. I'm going to take this brush, and uh, let's just go ahead and start with the darkest portions, right? So I'm just going to dip right into the black. Don't want to put too much paint on there. I want it to stay nice and pointy here. Nice and pointy. Uh -huh. Because, you know, it's a detailed brush. It's meant to be for the deets. Um, All right. Lori Schilling says, I like that, Lee. I like them both. That's a Lois Schilling, I think. Oh, excuse me. What did I say? Lori. Lori. Oh, I misread that. My bad. My bad. <laughs> Forgive me. All right. So, oh, I've just, see, look at that. I've just smeared paint somehow onto my canvas. That's okay. It's no fun if you're not making a mess. All right, so here we go. So just kind of figure it out. We can, again, it, it's acrylic paint. So you can always cover things up later on. If you use too much black, you can let it dry. So I'm just going to go ahead and here. I'm going to start with the sleeve, right? And we're just going to gently kind of just fill up the space, some gentle drag marks here. It doesn't have to be perfect um, in the fact that it doesn't have to be perfect lines, like seamless lines or harsh lines, right? Because, I mean, if you can, if you want to, but just giving you some options here because it will match our background, right? At least for mine, because I do have a little bit of choppiness in here. But your own style will come out and be consistent with your character anyway. So it's all good. If you're painting, and I'm sure it will, if your painting turns out fantastic, where do you plan to hang it? I should right say when you're, you're painting. Oh, showcase Right it. above uh, Jon Snow's sword over there. Ooh. It'll look even better that far away. As I've said, a lot of artwork, people make that joke about it. Like, oh, yeah, artwork, you see it far away, far, far away. But you're actually supposed to look at artwork far away. <laughs> so that way, everything comes together. If something... Is that true? You're not just taking a dig, right? Like, it'll look better the further it's away. <laughs> Sometimes. Um, <laughs> but it is true. Like I said, if I if I look at my, like I said, with my James Bond painting, and I, he doesn't have a face. He looks yeah. horrifying. But like I, some I faceless like mummy. That. But when you put it further away, it doesn't matter because you still know who it is. And it just it gives you all the sense that you need to understand the painting. And it looks good. If you put too much detail and stuff like, for example, I've got my little Daniel Craig right here. You can't even he he has if we get it really close, he you can see his eyes, his nose, oops, all of that kind of stuff. But when you put it further away, there's no point. You can't see it and it gets all muddied up anyway. I think my brush is like broke there's like bristles like sticking way out um yeah. so what you can do it also depends on the type of fibers that the bristles have um sometimes that can be an effect but if you take your paintbrush and kind of roll it like twist it with your fingers roll it in the paint and then kind of gently press down on the sides um that will help to kind of push them together. If the bristles are still flaring out too much, you might want to take a pencil and snip all those back. Need to do a painting of the of this, but instead of Bond, it's the Canadian bear. Um, Why is it always about Jay? I think we, we've got plenty of Canadian bears in the world. <laughs> Why is it always about Jay? Because it's about Jay. Do your own painting. That's right. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> He was here doing his own painting a while ago. That was that was funny. That was no, fun. I'm kidding. I'm... That was fun. Kidding, not kidding. Look, I'm the second born too. I, I know what you mean. I, I feel you. <laughs> yep. It's always about the first born. Um, so yeah, you can see he's got his shirt. If you wanted to, you could even use this paintbrush kind of like a pencil and do a rough sketch, if you will, of where you might think. Like, for example, we know he's got the head is gonna be kind of light, so you could always just kind of create that v portion for a collar we know his hand is going to be here so if you wanted to you could just kind of do a little circle to kind of indicate that we've got the shirt portion 
So oh, you nice could do some. You could do something like this. I'm going to leave that here for you to look at if you. If you yeah, need to. I see what you're getting at there. Let me, in fact, get a little closer here. Oh, great! Now I can't see. Okay. I need to get a different arm. <laughs> Some good talk here. Who knew that James Bond would get us all thinking? Who knew? So, if there were to be another James Bond, James Bond film, did you say Jane Bond? My, I said James. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, just... my. I'm still getting over some allergy stuff, and so my nose is not totally clear. So some of my words get a little garbled. But um, Jane Bond. Um, so if there's to be another James Bond movie with a male figure, who do you think would be good for the next James Bond? Um, I want an unknown. I, I don't yes. want, like, I like Henry Cavill. I, I, he would probably do really well in the role. But I I think I just, I want an unknown. Yeah, me too. Give, some, give us somebody else a chance. Yeah. All right, I'm trying to get this gun hand in place here this is yeah and, and again it's gonna look really weird so don't worry it's it's okay it's supposed to look silly i think henry cavill is overrated but that's just me so i wouldn't pick him i'm not saying he's a bad actor or anything i just like i just don't get the the hype i just i don't get it You didn't like him as Superman? I mean, he was, he was all right. He did a good job. I just, I think it's also because I'm just so tired of seeing the same superheroes over and over again, being recast, redone, remade, and like, all right, great, another hot-looking superhero. Yay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, I, mean, I think he would be good. I just, um. Mm -hmm. I, I just really want somebody new, fresh. Yes, new and fresh. Let's see here. I'm just going to, like I said, I'm going to kind of give you a couple of areas that I'm going to paint black. And then if you want to kind of copy that, you can just as a reference. And then we will be adding some white in here. And then it will start merging some of our grays. It's going to be fantastic. Hopefully you're finding some some freedom in all of this. Let loose a little bit. I know it can be kind of nerve wracking to paint humans. I've calmed down now, but see, I'm I'm Good. a bit of an introvert um, myself. Ah, my people. Till I get, ex you know, especially when I'm focused, like I just shut up. So I have to remember, like, oh yeah, I'm live. Sorry. <laughs> yes, no, I understand. It's, it's kind of like when I do my painting streams, and really when I want to do my artwork, I don't I don't want to talk. You know, you want to be focused. You want to do zone in. Right. But, you know, I, there's been a couple of times where I do no talking streams, but somehow it just doesn't seem, even for me, it doesn't seem quite as fun. I've kind of had to train myself to talk while I do. Now, when I do my more serious art pieces, I don't, I don't ever do those live. Um, I need to be focused and in the zone for that. Yeah. Now, like right. I said, the hand is going to look really janky. Don't overthink it. Nobody's going to really pay it that much attention. It's just going to be like this sea claw thing. Yeah, I've um, I got focused on the image, uh, not what you're doing. So mm -hmm. I started filling in a lot of the black where I can see, and then I looked at what you're doing, like, oh, I'm doing a little. <laughs> Different. That's fine. Yeah. Trust so your own process. How this is going to turn out. Yeah. If it's working, then go ahead. Um, do you need me to do anything or explain anything? Uh, no, you're wonderful. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, you're, <laughs> I try. You're a great um, teacher. Well, that's always uh, heartening to hear. Because um, I do. I want compliments. Compliments, gentlemen. See mm -hmm. how easy that was? Oh, man. I fell right into that trap, didn't I? <laughs> 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 don't, don't think I've got any other kind of motive, though. It's just I'm just talking about the painting. Bye, Cajun Corey. Thanks for being here. Thanks, Cajun Corey. 
All right, this now I'm doing the. I think it's his. It looks like his tie or something that's kind of going mm -hmm. down into his left. Yeah. So I'm gonna try to. And that's the cool thing about the brain and all of that. It will fill in the gaps when, especially when other people are looking at it. If they, here's the thing. It's it's so interesting how this works. If people know what it is that you've painted, right? Like people will look at this and they clearly be like, "That's James Bond," right? Yeah they're going to automatically their brain is going to automatically fill in the spaces so if you do a weird line court towards the center and let's say you didn't actually that's more of a shadow right people are going to automatically think of it as most likely as the tie itself because that's what he wears like that's part of the suit it's an iconic moment so our brain has a habit of filling in what's not even there because of our perception of things yeah i feel like there's a message in there but um I've learned that even for myself, like when I took drawing class in college, oops, sorry. And we took, it was observation drawing is what the class was called, observation class. And um, we were told we needed to draw what we saw, not what we thought we saw. Mm. And that was actually a lot more difficult than it seems. You would think, well, if I'm looking at something, I'm of course going to draw what's there. But our brains have a habit of filling in the space of what we think is there because we're familiar with that item. Um, she would, our art teacher, she would always throw around weird stuff. She just takes stuff. We had a jawbone of a horse, a bunch of foam, styrofoam cups, a pillar, a skeleton, toy cars <laughs> and a can like a like a, a tarp and she just like throw that and arrange it in the center somehow every sometimes it was different every single time and she's yeah. like draw what you see and sometimes she would come around and she'd look over our sh shoulder and she's she would point at something she's like is that really there and you're like what do you mean she's like look is that shadow really there is that line really there and so you look at it again and you're like, not really. And she is so funny. She's just kind of smug a little bit. I loved her. She's great. She's like a gypsy. Um, she'd look at you and you'd go, uh-huh. And then just walk away. That's all she, <laughs> that's all she Wow. Had. Wow. And so you go in, you're like, oh, I am not actually drawing what I'm seeing. I'm drawing what I think I see. So take lessons from that. Um, exactly. Becoming aware of what you perceive and what you feel in is core task of an artist. It's also kind of fun because it's just like, let's just see what the people see, like what, what they see. Uh, little Spidey says, I'm taking notes, Mr. Lee. Respect, praise, compliments, kindness, all good. Yes, yes. All right. So I am going to, I am going to rinse my brush on this because I'm going to go in for the white. Okay. Now, it's okay if there's a little bit of, of black in there um, left over. It doesn't have to be perfectly clean. That will kind of help us with um, with the white portion as well. So I'm just going to go in. Same thing with the black, but only with white this time. I'm going to go on the opposite side, and we're just going to kind of follow, like again, our guideline. We, we can see where the brightest spaces are. And then we can also see where it start, starts to slowly transition into these grays. I need the art cam. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> no, that's it. We're from here I'm on, on out. I'm on my own from now on. <laughs> that, that wasn't enough for you to get. <laughs> 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 Thank you. I would have totally just started. <laughs> <laughs> my bad. All right. So this we can also use to cover up any of the, the lines that we made with our pencil. Just kind of fill in some white. And then we'll we'll start mixing our black and white here in a little bit. Just try to put the white in the brightest spots first. So I've got the side of his face. I've definitely got his hand. And then the side of his leg over here as well. And underneath of his jacket. Or excuse me, underneath his arm on his jacket. Blazer or whatever. Do people still call it blazers? Like, is that too outdated terminology? Because I still call it blazers. Um, I call it a blazer. Okay. Sport, right. Or a sport coat. sport coat. What makes it a sport coat? 
it's a coat designed to wear on its own. Sometimes button placements um, can, you know, it's like a suit coat is going to have matching trousers, pants. Okay. Uh, Blazer is going to be on its own. It's not going to have anything. So why do they call it a sport coat? It's not obviously for it's for sport. Is it like sporting a coat, it's, like wearing it, a coat? It's no, it's just I think it's a way to say it's a little more just casual. Oh, it's going to be just a more casual. I'm going to be a well-informed gentleman by the end of this as well. Look at that. Than a suit, <laughs> suit jacket. OK, so. All right. So we're doing white on the coat, the face. The... I'm just doing a little section. Honestly, I've just done. I know it's really hard to see, but I've done a little section right here with white. Not the whole thing, not the whole panel. I've done down the leg, the hand, and the side of the face. The entire leg or just like a section again? I just did a slim section down the length of the leg. So is there canvas between the black and the white? No, that... we're going to basically start incorporating some black on with our white. Okay. Some grays. Gotcha. So I'm going to reapply some white to my brush. Get just a teeny tiny bit of black. Let me see here. That'll zoom in. I don't know. I don't think so. There we go. In comparison, more white than black. And again, just, oh, sorry. I was going to ask this an artsy question. You started with black. Is there a reason you start with the dark col colors? Yes. Um, black. Let me move over this way. Oops. It is, for me and my experiences, let me put it this way. Um, it's harder to recover lighter sections than it is darker sections. Okay. Dark is just so black is just so dominant or domineering that it can easily overtake any color or white. White, on the other hand, has a hard time combating other things. And so if I want to have really bright sections, um, it, it, it kind of just goes with the feels too. Sometimes, let me put it this way. Sometimes when I paint and I want a section to be really bright, I start with the lightest section because that way it's in its purest form. Mm -hmm. But then there's sometimes like this where it's meant to be more on the darker side anyway. It'll be, it's just kind of like a, I think you just kind of learn it as you go kind of thing is different for each person. But I start with the black because it, in a way, with a little bit of the black left in the brush, it'll allow the white to not be as bright, but it still is. It's kind of a, <laughs> it's kind of a thing you just kind of learn and do, I guess. But um, because we don't, I don't necessarily want this thing to be pure white per se. So it's it's a way for it to be just. I mean, you don't even notice it. You can't even tell that there's a little bit of a difference in the white because of that little bit of black that's left over in the brush. Yeah. Um, now. I don't know if that's the same for acrylic painting. I know with oil painting, it's said that you need to start with your darkest portions first and work your way to the light. I don't do that. That doesn't work for me. I start with medium. That way I can go either direction. <laughs> um, but again, it's different for each person. As a self-taught artist, I don't know all the ins and outs. Some stuff I just do because that's I, I can't even explain. It's just what I do. But um but I'm going to start with this leg over here. So that way, again, it's over to the side. It's not in the section, in the center. I'm going to okay. start at the bottom and uh, just with the shoe and just kind of dab it on there. This is uh, white with a just a hint of black? It is. I'm going to increase the black as I go. But like I said, it's always easier to, to add more later on. And just so here's the thing, too. We know that our light source is coming from this direction, right. obviously, because of where the light is hitting him on this body. So let that be your guide as well. If you're not sure where your highlights need to go or your shadows, always consider your light source. And again, your brain will kind of fill in some of the pieces there. Um, but you can also refer back to your little image to kind of help you. But also don't be afraid to just kind of do what looks good to you as well. Um, Broken Tusk Garage says it's been years since I've done canvas, but I was taught it's easier to blend down from dark than up from light. 
I, I do. I also just, like I said, I think it just depends on the person. Everybody's got their own little way of doing things. Now, again, this doesn't need to be a perfect blend because it all will just work out. But also, if you remember, you know, in with our background, it's not necessarily a perfect blend either. And it still works out. Looks more like I, <laughs> I clopped paint on the, on the canvas. Use really tiny strokes. Now, if you hold your paintbrush really close to the metal like so, it's more reminiscent of a pencil, something we okay. might be more familiar with, and you'll have better control. Feel free. Your painting, hopefully, in the background should be dry by now. So you can kind of use that. You know, If you need to, you can rest your pinky or your wrist up against it to also give you better control. Oh, that makes a lot of difference. Mm-hmm. Now yeah, I like to save that towards the end, just so that it's harder. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, I tell my students things like that all the time. People don't realize how much muscle it actually takes to create, um, you know, like to paint and to create kind of different art pieces. Um, we have to be able to hold our fingers, our wrist, our elbows our shoulders, even our back in a certain position for great lengths of time. And basically in a, your muscles are contracted, like they're in a, a gripped state. Oh, I can't think of the right word. <laughs> they're tight, right? Because you're trying to make sure that your brush only moves where you want it to. If you, like when I first started painting, you know, your hand cramps after a while and, you know, it starts shaking and stuff like that. You actually have to develop the muscles in your hands and everywhere else in order to hold the paintbrush. I tell people all the time, my muscles are for precision, not for strength. Um, and it just, it does. It takes quite a bit of muscle development and people don't realize that. And just be like, oh, you're such a great artist. Be like, yeah, it actually, and sometimes artists actually do warm ups, warm up exercises mm. where they start. You just, just to kind of get the, the jitters out and, you know, just to kind of warm up the muscles that go in rotation, swish back and forth, whatever the case might be, just to loosen things up. Um, I don't really do that, but I do kind of start when I'm going to paint something. I typically start with the background unless it's oil painting, but I do something that requires bigger strokes, right? And so that just naturally just starts warming up the wrist and the fingers. How's it coming? Uh, I'm not sure yet. We're, okay. We, right. I understand the valley of decision of in, in, in uncertainty. Yes. That's okay. Again, you know, so if you're, if you're not sure, it, it does really help to lean back and kind of look at it from a distance. Okay. Thank you. Because again, we, we tend to start focusing on all of the areas that look weird. Um, and it's just going to all start looking janky and weird, but trust the process, trust the process, and then take a step back or two or lean back. That's so if you ever notice that, um, especially when they're making parodies and stuff like that, but when people mimic artists or they dress up as artists, you ever notice that their paintbrushes are like, you know, this long? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. The reason being is so that they can hold it by the tip. This is like an advanced method, by the way, but so you can hold it by the tip. So that way you're able to sit back further. Oh. To take it all in versus being up close and noticing all the imperfections when it all comes together when you stand back. I got you. Yeah, look at us learning today. Better and smarter people after just a couple hours of painting. Look at that. I think it's more of the uh, blending with the other colors that are on here that's throwing me. It looks patchy, not, not like a blend. I don't know if we're... And that's fine because it will also make it look like the the material has texture, if that's what you mean. I, I don't know. 
Because <laughs> like my mine right here, you may not be able to see it through the camera, but I've got very patchy portions in the pants yeah. section. But I actually don't mind that when I look at it on the screen a little bit further away, they all just kind of go together anyway. And it just kind of looks like material, you know, it's folded and scrunched up and all that. Okay. Lois, let me say this correctly. <laughs> Very interesting. I'm learning so much. Thanks, Tabitha. You're welcome. My pleasure. I like to be able to help people out. There's there's a lot that goes into it. It's not just splashing paint on a canvas. And even that, you know, that actually takes some technique. I know people like to make fun of it a lot. And there are some art pieces, I'm not going to lie, that I think are silly, stupid, and just whatever. But haughty snort of derision towards these people. But at the same time, when you learn a little bit more about abstract art, oh, I forgot to plug in my iPad. It's about to die. We can't have that. Um, good thing we're nearing the end. But abstract art is actually really difficult to do because, because, teachable moment here. Because you have to try, depending on what you're, you're doing, but most of the time, you're trying to create feelings as a visual. Hmm. And because feelings don't have a visual, like, you know, you can tell when someone feel sad right they right, usually right. cry they're frowning but feelings in and of themselves don't are not a, vi a visible substance so it's amazing to me that's why i say being a, a painter an artist it's like being a wizard right you create something out of nothing and if you're trying to express anger let me just ask you let me give you a quiz here you know lee if you were going to try to paint something that expressed anger what colors would you use? Black and red. Yeah. It's true. Red is pretty much known as either a romantic or a hostile color, depending on how it's used. And so artists spend a great deal of time trying to use color to display feelings or thoughts. So the way that you have your brushstroke pattern, you know, if you use if you use like reds and, and yellows and purples and whatever like that, and you're doing it in like swirl motions and it doesn't seem to make sense, it could be. And art is meant to to open up questions and conversations, right? Really, it is. Yeah. So when you look at a picture like that, initially, it doesn't make any sense because it's like it's just a bunch of swirls with colors. But if you try to think of why somebody would do that, it could it could depict chaos. Mm chaotic emotion somebody was feeling a certain some way and this was the only way they could express their feelings because chaos can be difficult to talk about because there are too many thoughts in your brain so you just put colors down and motion down to represent what you're feeling so the next time you see a ridiculous piece of artwork you know that and then and, and because of the, and the, with art being so subjective and that's why, again, people just don't, they don't talk about art. We just look at it and be like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. yeah but let's think about it a little bit. Why, you know, why would somebody spend time and money to do this? Now the pictures that are selling for like a hundred thousand dollars and they're literally just painted black. Okay. <laughs> I mean, I would, t if I did that, I would title it a bat in a cave on a stormy night. At least give it a, a creative title. S Snow bunny lost in yeah. a blizzard if it's white. That doesn't make any sense to me. That I don't understand. Like, send me that money and I will do 10 times the work. But anyway, but when you look at these abstract pieces of art, sometimes you do, it's more about what you, it's not as much about what you see, but what somebody was thinking when they made it. Mm, it's fascinating. Love talking to artists. They are like so weird deep oh, okay yeah <laughs> and weird let's see uh feelings are visible to some feelings have patterns vibrations frequencies most need them to be made visible or perceive them on a different level mostly we do it unconsciously mm -hmm. yeah i mean we don't realize that we so i had a friend unfortunately she um at a young age she lost her mother and we were there with her and her family during that time and 
when hospice was coming in, um, you know, they send also care workers to help the children deal yeah. with these issues during this time. And it's just so interesting how this works. So my friend came to me and she was talking about this care worker. And she's like, it was so stupid. She's like, she came in, treated us like kids. Like she brought out these paper plates with a bunch of crayons and she told us to draw what we were feeling. She's like, it was so stupid. She's like, so I just took the red pen and just scribbled all over it. She's like, it was so stupid. Not realizing. That's exactly, that's exactly what she was going for. Wow. What she was going for. And I, at that time, didn't understand that because I, I really, I wasn't really an artist at that time. But now that I'm older and I look back at that, I'm like, that, she knew exactly what she was doing when she did that. And the, the child at that time didn't even realize, and I won't say she played into her hand, but essentially, you know, yeah, she, the outcome was exactly what that person, that therapist knew it would be. Okay. Now, if you wanted to, I've also, if you want to up the ante, Lee. Uh-oh. There is some purple inside of my bond. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. <laughs> but I, in some of the, basically, so we have highlights, shadows, and midtones, right? These are the three components of blending that make things look interesting and realistic, right? So highlights are easy, shadows are easy, midtones, it's in the middle, basically where we have our gray sections. You'll see a couple of sections that have just a whisper of purple, but you don't have to do that if you don't want to. Um, I mean, I'm down for anything. <laughs> okay. I'm, I mean, let's, if we're going for it, might as well go for it. Okay, then you just basically, um, let's just get kind of like we did with our background here. Just just get everything sculpted the way we want it to be. And then, um, oops. And then we can add, go back and just add some little traces of color. So yeah, art therapy, very, very good. Very simple sometimes. And, and we have said before, you know, it can be very stressful, but it actually, it opens you up to possibilities beyond what you normally think or what you would consider as normal or good. Um, you know, what is good art? What is bad art? Well, when you look at something, I see somebody saying the, uh, the sculpture, was it in Chicago, the um, MLK? Yeah, that is not done well, in my opinion. That sculpture was horrible and suggestive and just not fair <laughs> to, to MLK. Yeah. But I, yeah, that was rough. That that's that's awful. But like we were talking about the abstract art, some art is just not our style or a preference. Like I'm the kind of person I really don't want a picture of like a sailboat on the ocean. Doesn't do anything for me. Um, I'm not a huge abstract art person, but I like, I think I like things with nature. So I like kind of, if you mix like fine art, traditional art with some abstract, like maybe you have a blurred out background, that's a bunch of swirly things and you've got like a leaf or something painted in the front. Um, but it just kind of starts showing you and teaching you, okay, there's more beyond number one, what your preferences are. And then it helps you to appreciate what other people do and go through, which is a really, really big part of it. You know, that's, you know, why they're we're, like we talked about before, respect for other people, their, their ways of doing things, um, all of that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And just because, I mean, I, I've made fun of artists too. I'm like, that looks stupid, but that's because <laughs> You know, I have my preferences, but I mean, honestly, if I would, if I would meet that person face to face, just because you have an opinion about something doesn't mean you have to express it, um, is another important thing. <laughs> element. So, um, question about yeah. material, like how mm -hmm. much does that play in doing this kind of stuff? Like having the right brushes, that kind of thing. 
like higher quality brush versus let me just go get the bottom of the barrel stuff um for me and many other artists it really is not about the supplies okay it's not at all about the supplies you get the supplies to make your job easier but that doesn't mean it'll be better artwork right um i have a myriad of of brushes back here some of them are old um I mean, like old. <laughs> Some of them are from like family members from decades ago and they just never use them or they did use them and then they used them like one time and that was it. Some of them are newer brushes. I can't say that I, I have maybe one brush, one, one or two brushes that I know of that are more expensive, but they're not really that expensive. I don't actually have any really expensive brushes. Um, yeah. Because there's, for me, currently, there's no point. Now, as you get further along in your artistic journey, you know, it is, it's about working smarter, not harder. So you all of a sudden discover, hey, I like this brush better. I like this paint better because it flows. It, it's smoother. Um, the yeah. bristles are stronger to get what you're trying to do. But that has to do more about personal technique and skill level versus... <clears throat> artwork itself um for example i used to go to a drawing night at this local geek out outlet i yeah i guess you could say it was like a pub but it wasn't because they didn't focus on like alcohol it just they had video games there and they had tvs and they had a tardis and they had board games but you could also buy a slushy or a beer if you wanted it to mm. so it was this really cool place it was called geeksboro and they would have drawing night, like every Tuesday. And I did not have the supplies like everybody else, but I wanted to go. So I went and I we were doing uh, historical characters and I drew a picture of a pharaoh. And I colored it and it was like the sandstone ones, like, you know, like the monuments. And this one guy who was an illustrator, he had the, the, the pens and everything. He did this amazing comic book art. And he looked over at my picture and he's like, oh, that's great. And I'm like, thank, thank you. Thank you so much. He's like, is that Prismacolor? Prismacolor is one of the more expensive and nicer pencils, color oh, wow. pencils. Yeah. I mean, it's over $2 for one pencil. Wow. Yeah. And I said, no, it's Crayola. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the cheapest coloring pencils out there. Crayola. And he's like, wow, you would never know. And so that's what I'm saying. Like, it's, it's not so much about the supplies, supplies as it is about. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. You know, I could, I could go outside and use chalk and create a beautiful picture with dollar store chalk. That's because I know how to use the equipment. Right. Not what equipment I'm using. If that makes sense. Gotcha. But it's nice to have nice things. Somebody bought me, one of my subscribers got sent me um, these beautiful pen, uh, Paint brushes, I love these. I don't know if they're expensive or not, but they're nice. Usually the ones with the grips usually cost a little more. Yeah. And I love it. <laughs> so. Awesome. Oh, sorry. Okay. I don't want to, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and just add a little bit of the purple, not a lot. I'm okay. Some whites and black. So you started, how did you apply everything to you? What order? You started with white or are you just oh, doing it? I got just a little bit. I didn't clean my brush. I got a little bit of purple. And I just kind of dabbed in some black, dabbed some white, just kind of splotch it on here, see what it looks like. Find an area off to the side that nobody will really notice. And then that's not enough purple for me. So I go in and add a little more. That's my thing. Mixing colors and identifying those colors, that that's tough for me. Um, that takes practice too. So don't think that you're not good at it. It actually takes practice. Like I've talked to people looking at art or a picture or something and they're like, man, I see purples and browns mm -hmm. and everything. And then I'm going, um, <laughs> I see uh, gray. I don't know. Right. Yes. Well, there's also a scientific aspect to that. I tend to see colors more vibrantly than most people is what I've been told. So I'll see things that might not be there, quote unquote. Yeah. But it's more of like, I'm able to pick it up better than other people. 
So that's something else to consider. Again, it doesn't mean that you're bad at something. It's just different perception. All right. Well, I'm going to try this purple thing out. All right. Where are we, where are we putting this now? So I'm kind of putting it where the highlights are, but I don't okay. want to overwhelm the highlights. So you can see that there's some maybe right here, but I still have that sliver of white over here. Um, less is more. Okay. Oh, I forgot what color I had. <laughs> here we go. You get a little bit of white. And it's just a little bit at a time. It really doesn't take much paint to make a difference. Um. But yeah, like I, when I first started painting, I didn't really understand the whole spectrum of colors, the science of colors and things like that. But as I've grown in my art journey, I start noticing things more. So I, while you're working on this, and I don't, I don't want to do this to brag necessarily, but I want to showcase something. Showcase away. I love seeing this stuff. Okay. I I see how that's that's working. Okay, so <clears throat> this is a picture I'm doing of Nerd Roddick. Wow. Hang on. That's awesome. Thank you. Let me move this out of the way. So it's it's obviously not done yet, but this is a picture I'm doing of Nerd Roddick. Okay. <clears throat> the piece the portion of this painting that i am the most proudest of is this little section on the side of his face you might ask why to have the why because i have finally started to learn and comprehend shadows aren't just gray they're not just black um there's elements of blue in there there's elements of orange in there and you're creating this kind of I don't know what kind of color, this murky color, but yeah. that is the most realistic. This has been, I, I have not been able to figure this out until I did this painting. And I am so proud of this little section here because it's the most realistic portion of any painting I've ever done. Nobody's really going to care about that, but I do. <laughs> so, wow. but I would never have learned how to mix these colors if I didn't keep practicing and trying before uh, you know, it was really, it was just a grayish version of his skin tone. But then I started understanding that there needs to be some blue in there because, because also, you know, with our hands and stuff, with the veins and whatnot, you know, there are elements of green and blue and purple in the undertones. Yeah. And so it's not that I was a bad artist. I just didn't understand how colors work in skin tone. That's incredible. I never would have like, I never would have thought of that. Me Never. neither. And that's the hard part about being self-taught is that nobody's, I don't know where I need to go to learn the next thing, right? So yeah. I'm just learning new things that maybe they're out of order. Maybe I should have been learning them a different way, but here I am now, killing it, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best anyway. Because I, like, when I did my painting of Gina Carano as Elizabeth Bennett, it turned out really great. But man, if I could take what I know now with coloring and apply that, because her skin tone is really rough, honestly. I was having a hard time understanding that. Yeah. Um, if I could take what I've done with Gary's face and put it on that painting, oh, it would just be so good. Awesome. <laughs> All that's right. In, that's so. incredible. Thank you. So just kind of look at your painting, see what needs to be touched up. Again, mine's kind of blotchy, kind of blurry, but I'm okay with that. And then he is kind of just new reviews. Oh my gosh, my stars and garters. Is that who I think it is? I am a complete and total pop culture noob. I know nothing. I'm guarantee she knows a little something now. Because um, <laughs> she has been streaming a lot. She's gaming. Still doing the comic books, all that kind of cool stuff. Um, but thank you for stopping in. The fact that you are learning it on your own way, out of order, makes your paintings more unique. True, true. Um, I often lurk, but I'm loving everything I'm learning from watching you today. Well, thank you. Thank you. I do love to help people. I, I love what art can help people understand in life because I myself have learned a lot about life through artwork. 
um, really quickly, I'm going to finish off my painting, but with two things. Okay. So I do want to take just pure black and kind of make a little blotch circle right above this hand area with a little bit of a, a line like so. I just want to do the simplest, let me zoom in a little bit, the simplest form of a gun possible because we, we can't see the length of the barrel. We just have to understand and let our brain fill in that it's there. Got you. Okay. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is basically rinse my brush a little bit, pat it dry. I don't want to rinse it too much. And we don't want bond floating in the ether. So I'm just going to do a couple of drag marks underneath his feet. And this makes all the difference in the world. I want to make sure the longest, darkest shadows are going over to the side because, again, we want to make sure we follow where the light is coming from. Oops, let me get too much. Let me see if I can make it as straight as I can. But if not, we'll just use a little bit of water and kind of desaturate it. And how did you, what did you um, color that with again? How did you make that? It's just, it's just black, whatever was left over my brush. I cut, because our water should be really murky by this point. So you just kind of splash it around in the water, to, you know, pat it out on your towel. And then just kind of, you know, go back and forth. Just making sure that it's darkest over towards the side over here. But yeah, I, I love what art teaches me about life. Art has taught me patience. We talked about that before the show. It's taught me patience on how to interact with people. It's taught me an appreciation for effort willingness on behalf oh so sorry I make everything hit but effort on behalf of people trying like you were saying you weren't <laughs> sometimes art isn't even about art itself it's about just the attempt and what you learned through that so like you were saying you know it took a lot to kind of get the nerve up to do this yeah and so when i see your artwork today whatever it looks like at the end I'm going to look at it and I'm sure I'm going to love it because I already like what I saw before, but it's more of like, I just appreciate you more as a person for your willingness to try. And I've had so many students and so many adults as well. When I used to work at the studio that had a complete different attitude, completely different attitude. Like just a whole, it's like salvation just came into their life when they came in and they had a bad attitude and they didn't want to do it. Maybe their girlfriends drug, dragged them there and uh, to, for date night or something. And they really did not want to paint because they just didn't think they'd be good at it. And then helping them see and understand that they could be good at it or that even if it's not their calling in life, they gave it the try just to see that whole attitude change when they look back and be like, and that confidence that comes. Yeah. I've seen the guys, they'll look at me, all right, all right, yeah, it's not so bad. I'm actually pretty good at this, even though it wasn't that great. But just see what it does to people is just so thrilling. Um, for me, artwork is a lot more about the lessons than it is about the actual painting itself. Um, so, so, the last, I don't know if you're done yet, Lee. Are you finished? I think uh, I think we're we're good here. Do I take this tape off? All right, so got... that's what I was going to say. The last thing we're going to do that's not technically painting, but the fun part. I mean, it all should be fun, but you know what I'm saying. Let me, the, the more satisfying aspect. Here we go. Now, also with your, and if you've done this already, it's okay. Now with your detail brushes, I don't, as far as brush etiquette goes, I don't like leaving them in the water, like to okay. sit in there because it pushes the bristles upward and that just damages our brush. So I like to swirl it around, leave it dripping with water, and then just set it on my towel, set it to the side. Because when we're done, of course, we're going to clean up our brushes anyway. But here we go. My favorite part. Hopefully my washi tape didn't let me down. Ah.
and it's just going to make everything look so clean. And I think you're going to really appreciate that as the uh, capable gentleman that you are, that freshness. So you look at that. Uh, it just makes a huge difference there. But that's my painting. We're not interested in that anymore. We want All to right. see the grand reveal. I've never done anything like this before, but this turned out a lot better than I could ever. I'm so excited! Imagine. So are you ready? I'm ready. Ta da! Ooh, look at that! Oh, you did really good on the shadows there. I was the jacket. I was afraid was going to be a little bit challenging. I wasn't going to tell you that, but <laughs> uh, it was totally challenging. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't want to unnerve you, but that looks so good. What do you think, chat? That looks so good. And just, just like, a whisper of color. Yeah, that the jacket was like, oh my gosh, I don't uh, know what I'm <laughs> And the, the hand <laughs> looks good. You didn't end up doing like a a a claw, like a crab claw yeah. or something. Um, everybody's saying that looks great. It's so awesome. It's nice, beautiful. Awesome. I was worried about the, you know, the face. Um, the yeah man that that is there and there's no facial features right we did it just to have a a blank face yeah. and that was even that was still challenging like i can't get this to <laughs> blend right what is the problem here why are faces so tough yes uh, they they are really are and so the great thing is like when you're like when you put this to the side, let it dry, you go do whatever you're going to do today, and then you come back, it's going to look 10 times better because number one, you're going to see it from afar. And secondly, we've been staring at this for two hours now. And yeah. so we'll see every little thing about it. And by the time you come back, most of that you'll just kind of have forgotten, if you will. Yeah. And um, it all just kind of comes together. Now, what I recommend, what I recommend all right. with your painting, with the bottom portion here exposed as you have it says yeah it looks great like the movement of the tie um is that you should sign your name in black ink and cursive underneath right in here okay i'm just a suggestion but i think it would really make your whole picture look just so cool i will um, do that it's always important, I think, to sign your artwork as well. It's just kind of like you put your name on it, be like, I did this. And maybe you could put the date on there if you feel, felt like it. I do recommend you can you, you could try to paint it. Some people just prefer to use an ink pen or like a nice fine tip Sharpie marker. But I, I think I would just from my personal perspective, my personal artistic reasoning, I just saw your picture. And I'm like, man, if it had his signature over there underneath of it not all the way in the corner leave a little bit of space like a finger's breadth space i'm like that would just like look so set cool. it off <laughs> I, I will do that before it goes up on the wall that looked so good this was a this was a really fun episode we've learned a lot about males and females for sure i think um good conversations about that use a classic pen is, is the suggestion and just because you're also paint you're going to be doing it on canvas Sometimes yeah. the pen can kind of skip, whereas if you have a felt tip marker of some kind, it just kind of glides better across it since it's not rolling or whatever. But um, yeah, this was fun. Thank you so much for coming onto my channel. And oh, uh, thank you for having me. I had an absolute blast. This was really nervous. Uh, I mean, I was really this was nervous. I was really nervous going to do this, you know, doing this. But man, that this was fun. I had a great time. Thank you for having me. I really appreciate um, the lessons that I've learned, and of course the the talks that we've had. It was it was awesome. Do you think you'll paint again? I think I will. I think I I, I will. I might uh, I might hire you as a teacher. Like, hey, this is what I'm trying to do. Can we can we do another one? And Let's I'd see. be happy to help. Yeah, sure, <laughs> do it. I've had some other people say, hey, can I come back on the show and paint again? I'm like, well. Maybe we'll just have to do that. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, yeah. Any questions before we go? For me, no. Do you have any art questions you might have, or I'm mean, like, hey, let me answer them for you. No, I'm good. I I learned so much. There was a lot that we talked about today, <laughs> both about my side of the house, the the my channel, and then of course the art. And this is, I'm just, I'm just taking this in. I'm I'm proud of that. I think that that yeah. turned out well. I mean, I was a lot better than tears. I thought. All right, I'll take what I can get. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, oh no it's all good but okay well thank you so much for being here and uh
course, everybody, thank you so much for your support. Be sure to check out Lee's channel and his Instagram and his Twitter and all that good stuff to find out how you too can be capable and a gentleman. You don't have to just be, you know, a snazzy dresser, but you can also fix a guitar. Um, <laughs> or hang it on the wall. That's and what listen, it was, found it on the wall. <laughs> and ladies too, uh, I talk a lot about, hey, maybe you need a gift idea or something like that there's content oh. out there for for you too or maybe you need help with something around the house there, there's content out there don't think it's just for the for the gentlemen for the men it's for everybody absolutely so, so with that further ado though thank you again so much for being here and for everybody uh liking and commenting it's so fantastic again check out his channels have a great rest of your saturday and we'll catch you next time if i was watching this video i would like it I would like the video and I would probably subscribe because this is so thoroughly entertaining and also well